Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to a live stream of evening prayer from St. Michael and All Angels Facebook page. Today is the 17th of October, and we are in the week of proper 24. Our worship begins on page 59 of our Book of Common Prayer. <coughs> Stay with us, Lord, for evening draws on and the day is almost over. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So welcome to those now joining in. We say the prayer of intention. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. And through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. We say the canticle, O Gracious Light. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. So welcome to those now joining in. Let us take a moment of silence as we allow God to bring to mind those things which we have done that were not pleasing to him. So, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. We say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us sing our office hymn, <coughs> hymn number 321, Jesus Shall Reign, Where Ere the Son, CPWI 321. Jesus shall reign where the sun doth his successive journeys run, his kingdom stretch from shore to shore, till moon shall wax and win no more. People and friends of every tongue dwell on his love with sweetest song. And infant voices shall proclaim their early blessings on his name. Blessings upon where he reigns, the prisoner leaps to lose his change. The weary find eternal rest, and all the sons of want are let every creature rise and bring peculiar honors to our King. Angels descend with songs again, and earth repeat the loud Amen. So welcome to those 
welcome to those now joining in. We just sang hymn number 321. Jesus shall reign. Now we turn to our Psalms. Psalms 114 and 115. Psalms 114 and 115. Beginning on page 621. 621. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his domin dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains, that you skipped like rams? You little hills, like young sheep? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water, and flintstone into a flowing spring. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory, because of your love and because of your faithfulness. Why should the heathen say, Where then is their God? Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills to do, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. Eyes have they, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Noses, but they cannot smell. They have hands, but they cannot feel. Feet, but they cannot walk. They make no sound with their throat. Those who make them are like them, and so are all who put their trust in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us and he will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great together. May the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children after you. May you be blessed by the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. The heaven of heavens is the Lord's, but he entrusted the earth to its peoples. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor all those who go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we have met these two Psalms on several occasions before. Psalm 114, you may remember as the Psalm for the Easter Vigil. And it is, talks about Israel being um, delivered from the hands of the Egyptians. Psalm 115 is what is described as a liturgical psalm and there seems to be a kind of response when you read Psalm 
from verse 9 O Israel, trust in the Lord He is their help and their shield That's the second part there can be taken as a response and so the psalm goes on to say to, to, com to really to complain about those who worship idols and the, the, the uselessness of it because we cannot worship something that you create if you create something then clearly you are greater than that thing and so how can you expect something that you create to save you or to deliver you? And it goes on to say in verse 17, The dead do not praise the Lord. And we know that idols are not living things, so they, they cannot praise the Lord, nor all those who go down into silence. <coughs> so the psalm is exhorting us to trust in God because God is alive and he's powerful and he is the God of all. And so let us turn to our first reading <coughs> from the book of Sirach, otherwise called Ecclesiasticus. Sirach chapter 4. This is 1 to 10. My child, do not cheat the poor of their living, and do not keep the needy eyes waiting. Do not grieve the hungry or anger one in need. Do not add to the troubles of the desperate or delay giving to the needy. Do not reject a suppliant in distress or turn your face away from the poor. Do not avert your eyes from the needy and give no one reason to curse you. For if in bitterness of soul some should curse you, their Creator will hear their prayer. Endear yourself to the congregation. Bow your head low to the great. Give a hearing to the poor and return their greeting politely. Rescue the oppressed from the oppressor and do not be hesitant in giving a verdict. Be a father to orphans and be like a husband to their mother. You will then be like a son of the Most High, and he will love you more than does your mother. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So welcome to those who have just joined us, who have recently joined. We turn to page 67 as we see the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, sorry, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 to 12 and 17 to 20. Luke chapter 10, this is 1 to 12 and 17 to 20. <clears throat> After this, Jesus appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. If anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, Eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. <clears throat> but whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall like heaven, sorry, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the demons, the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So welcome to those who have joined recently. We turn to page 55 as we say the song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, the light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Jesus sends his disciples out, well actually they may not have been, the disciples may have been included, but this number is 70, so that is more than his disciples, so those who are following him, he sends them out to go before him to the places where he himself will be coming after. <coughs> And he tells them not to take anything that will distract them or will keep them back. 
because they are on a very urgent mission and they return with joy because the demons submit to him in Jesus name and Jesus cautioned them that that is all that is fine but what they should really be rejoicing about <coughs> is that their names are written in heaven and that is interesting because whenever I read this I think about Judas now, Judas was probably among those who were sent out and uh, he could have been or he, he certainly was among those the twelve when Jesus sent them out and if Jesus says that you know their names are written in heaven and we all often read that Jesus, Jesus was the one who was lost then it is not so important it is more important to make sure that you stay the course and that you get your names written in heaven than, than to make sure that the demons and, and people submit to you. And so Jesus is trying to keep them focused on what is more important. And what is more important is, is what is important is not that you know people do what you say or that people recognize you or that people um, praise you and, and acclaim you. But what is more important is that you keep, that you are obedient to God, that you do not let yourself be distracted by the success of your mission. And it is very, it is really hard, it is hard for us to measure success, but we have to remain faithful. And sometimes we do not see the results of our efforts and we think that what we are doing is, is not bearing any fruit and so we get despondent because we're not seeing people respond to us, we're not seeing, in other words, we're not seeing, we're not able to cast out demons and, and people, the demons are not submitting to us and we're not able to do great or mighty works or not that we can see. But that is, Jesus says, don't worry about that. All that is good. And you just do what you were sent to do. And rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice that you have done what God has asked you to do. And rejoice that you are in good standing with God. Rejoice that you are righteous in God's sight. And and that you are faithful to to the cause so let us not get carried away with our success and let us not get despondent if we don't see what we consider to be the success of our efforts yes i know we like to see remember full full churches when when it's possible when it is safe again you like to see or everybody participating and doing what they're supposed to. You would like to see or, or the members of our committees and the ministries, everybody pulling their weight and doing what they're supposed to do. And, you know, we like to see the, the funds coming in and we have enough money to do whatever we, we need to do. But do not get despondent, let us not get despondent when we don't see these things happening because we just have to keep working. He just says the harvest is plentiful. That means there's a lot of work to be done. There's, there will always be a lot of work to do. There will always be work to do. So we will never stop working until we have left this earth. So let us not be <coughs> Let us not get worried about the amount of work to do, but rather, he says, to pray to the Lord of the harvest to, to send more laborers. So ask God to move in people's hearts that they will 
come to, to live for him, that they will come and work for the kingdom, that they will come and do what they have been sent to do. And do not worry about the, what we see as a lack of success and do not get carried away by what we see as, as success. But let's keep, the, keep our, our focus and let us stay the course and let us be faithful to our mission. Right? The disciples were faithful to their mission and that is why they had success. So let us be faithful to our mission. <coughs> So we turn to the Apostles' Creed on page 69. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. And now your church with faithfulness, and your servant with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. So we turn to page 180. We see the collect for proper 24. Proper 24. as we are fast approaching the end of the church year. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nation. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Light nor darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We see the collect for Sundays. O God of peace, you have taught us that in retaining and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So in a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your own personal petitions to God.
know what you are missing here our prayer. So as we continue in prayer, we lift up our country and we pray for an end to crime, the violence, the leaders. We pray for those who have lost loved ones through violence. We pray for the families who are without. We pray for the children who have been made orphaned because of the death, the violent death of parents. We ask that you continue to comfort them, continue to help see them through this period of distress and trauma, grief. We pray that they will be taken care of. We pray for those who have violence in their hearts, those who want to exact revenge, those who feel wronged, those who feel rejected and want to act out. We pray for your peace in their hearts. We pray for a change in their hearts. We pray that they will encounter your love and your peace and your grace. And so turn away from their evil intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country as we deal with several issues at this time. The issue of the, the head of the police service, the all the political and economic issues we bring before you and we pray that our leaders will listen to wisdom and will do the right thing, will do the thing that will benefit the country. We make decisions that will benefit the country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for an end to the pandemic. We lift up those who are ill, who are suffering from the virus, especially those in ICUs and HDUs. We pray for their comfort. We pray that they, you will grant relief for, for them from their sufferings. We pray that they will use this time to get closer to you. We pray for those who have lost loved ones to the virus, that you will comfort them and help them to get through this, the pain of the, of the loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our education system, that we will make the most of it, that we will be creative, our teachers and trainers and parents will be creative and we ask you to help us to overcome the obstacles and so that children will not be behind in their education and in their syllabus. <coughs> Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the world, for those places where there is suffering, homelessness, hunger. We pray for refugees who have been displaced. We pray for those who have nowhere to go. And we ask for relief for this, from their situation. We pray for those suffering from natural disaster. We continue to pray for their protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray that as a church and as your people, we will continue to work to bring the, the harvest to fruition. We pray that we will not be discouraged, we will not be daunted by the 
the among the work that is to be done, you ask you to give us your spirit of perseverance, your grace and your love and your patience, so that we do what we have to do, what you have asked us to do, and what you have called us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those celebrating birthdays today or at this time. We thank God for those who have seen another year of life. <coughs> we thank God for those who are celebrating anniversaries and other special occasions. We ask that you continue to bless them, to keep them in your love and your grace. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. So before we end our worship, let us sing hymn number nine. As now the sun's declining rays, CPWI number nine. <coughs> As now the sun declining rays at even tide descend, so life's sweet day is sinking down to its appointed end. Lord, on the cross thine arms were stretched to draw thy people nigh. O oh, grant us then that cross to love and in those arms to die. For oh, glory to the Father be, O oh, glory to the Son, O oh, glory who to thee while endless ages run. Amen. The prayer of dedication in page 73. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us at St. Michael and All Angels for the service of evening prayer. Continue to be safe. Continue to be vigilant, diligent. Remember the four W's, wear, wash, watch, watch, and pray. All right. So thank you again. Have a peaceful and restful night, and we will see you again.